tēnā koutou katoa, no mai haere mai. Welcome to the New Zealand Open Source Awards 2018. Uh, my name is Catherine Tyree, and I have the pleasure to be your MC tonight for this evening. Um, shortly, I'm going to hand over to others, um, namely Chris Cormack, who'll give a brief mihian karakia before we enjoy our dinner together. However, such is the life of an MC that it falls to me to share some of the essential housekeeping items from Te Papa. So, number one, you may desire a beverage. So, if you cannot see your drink of choice on the table in front of you, you can also ask the friendly wait staff for a soft drink, some water, or a beer. Now that I have your attention, here's the notes from Te Papa. <laughs> so, um, Firstly, if there's anyone here who needs special assistance in the event of an evacuation or an emergency, um, please make yourself known um, to one of the staff of Te Papa. Uh, in a fire evacuation, there'll be a continuous sound of an alarm, and that'll be activated throughout the whole building, and everyone should, in that event, follow the Te Papa staff's instructions. So that's all we need to do in a fire. In the event of an earthquake, we're in the best, or one of the best places we could possibly be in Wellington, on top of 150 base isolators that allow the building to sway in, in the breeze of an earthquake. So um, should there be one, we'll stay in the building and wait again to hear that it's safe to leave. Um, smoking. If you are a smoker, um, you can't smoke anywhere in the buildings of Te Papa. You'd need to leave the building and go right out the front. So I'll leave it to you to find a, a, a gap when that's even possible. We're running a pretty tight ship tonight. And lastly, and quite, ex quite importantly on the notes, um, toilets are just on the, w the way you came in. If you went back past the beautiful big Ponamu um, and just round here, the toilets are just on the other side of the entrance way and there are um, accessible toilets as well as regular ones. So that's that on the notices. So. Also kind of in the vein of notices, um, not everyone likes surprises, so I'll give you a little bit of insight into how this evening will run. Um, as mentioned, we'll soon have the mihi and karakia before we have our entree. And then following the entree, we have a wonderful keynote speaker, Ian Cormack, here tonight. And after we hear from Ian, dinner will be served. Uh, if you have any questions about the food in front of you tonight, please ask one of the wait staff. Then fairly quickly after dinner, we'll launch right into the award presentations and we'll have a brief break for dessert at half time. So that's pretty much it. Um, as promised, um, we'll now invite Chris Cormack back to give a brief mihi and karakia to open our event and then we'll enjoy our entree. Thank you so much for being here. Katangi te titi, katangi te kaka, katangi hoki koe. Uh, ite tua tai na mihi kinga iwi kainga o te tenei rohi, na rata te mana, na rata te finoa. Uh, na mihi hoki ki a uh, rongo fukata, na rata te iwi kainga o te papa tonga rewa uh, ite wane. Uh, Kia mau mahara tato, ito tato uh, tino hoa mahi Pauline kua wehi te po. Uh, e kui moi mai i, I tō moi ngā roa. E ngā tini mati, ngā tini aitua o ia marae, o ia marae, wahi o te aki ki te ao mate mate. Haere ngā mate, haere, 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 haere ki kuai ki nui, he wai ki roa, ha wai ki pāma mau. Ka hapa te hono tātai hono, tātai, uh, te honga mate ki te honga mate. Ka hapa te hono tātai hono, tātau te honga ora ki a tātau. Ki ngā uh, kaiwhakahaere o te pōnei, tēnā koutou. Uh, ki ngā uh, kaimahi o te papa, tēnā koutou. Uh, ki ngā mana hiri, kua, hai, hua, kua hui hui mai nei, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Uh, me karakia tātou. Uh, no mai ngā hua o te wao, o te ngākina, o te waitai, o te wai Māori, ngā rongo. Nā tāne, nā tangaroa, nā maru, ko ranginui, ranginui e tūho, tū iho nei, ko papatuanuku e takotō nei. Tūturu whakamaua ki a tīna, 
tīna, haumie, huie, tai ki e. Me kai tātou. Hi everyone. I know you're only just getting used to me. I'm back already. Hope everyone's enjoyed their starters and meeting everyone at their table so far. I can report that wearing a lapel mic while you're eating is a little bit like being kind of 99% sure that you've hung up from the conference call. It's just a little nervy, but we're all good. So approaching the stage next, we have Don Christie, whom some of you will know in his role as Managing Director for Catalyst IT or as the co-chair of New Zealand Rise. Don is, of course, a strong advocate for free and open source software, and tonight he is the convener of the judging panel for the New Zealand Open Source Awards. So please join me in welcoming Don. Uh, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Um, okay, so Catherine told you who I am, so I don't need to do that little bit. That was good. Um, my job is to uh, acknowledge uh, you as attendees, acknowledge the good work that the judges have done, and thank our sponsors as well. Uh, we started, Catalyst started these awards way back in 2007, and I don't think we really thought that over 10 years later we'd still be going, nor did we really dream about just how broad uh, this event would become. We were, we're technologists, so these awards had their roots in technology, but now they're much more of a reflection of our society's desire to share, to collaborate, to be open and build uh, things as a whole. So we have scientists, we have artists, we have um, librarians, we have musicians. It's just a, it's just a wonderful, wonderful uh, reflection of what New Zealand is. And on the judging panel, uh, we were fortunate enough to have a human rights lawyer, a librarian, um, one of the world's leading proponents for open government, uh, and uh, an artist, as well as some technologists as well. So we're still here. <laughs> uh, so thank you to the judges. Um, it would be uh, Joy, Bruce, Chris, Pierre, Bronwyn, and David. Thank you very much for your, for your help there. And I see, thankfully, some of you have these booklets in your hands, and, and if you want to get a sense of just how broad the entries have been, please do flick through, flick through them. Um, it should also give you a sense of just how flipping difficult the job of judging is, even just to reach this short list, let alone pick winners. Um, and you're, uh, towards the end of the evening, you'll see that we have uh, two special awards, which really focus on two entries that, that that kind of transcended any attempt to categorize them. Uh, and so, you know, that just is, again, a, an indication of, of the, the, the task that we, we had in front of us. Um, I'd also really like to acknowledge and thank the sponsors of this event this evening. Um, one, they're, they help make sure that we have a sumptuous meal in, one of venu in, in Wellington's leading venue. What a fantastic spot this is. Thank you, Te Papa, uh, and thank you to the Whare here. Um, but two, it's also just a reflection of the support that the ideals of open source and free software uh, and those concepts have. So we have four of New Zealand's uh, technology associations sponsoring this event. Uh, Platinum sponsor is Internet NZ. They're always there when there's something good happening. Um, we have the IT professionals, uh, New Zealand Rise, and the New Zealand Open Source Society, of course. Um, so thank you to those organizations. Uh, I'd also very much like to thank Red Hat, the world's uh, most successful open source company, um, Section 6, uh, Catalyst Cloud, Cloud uh, Catalyst Cloud Sourcing. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, no pressure. Uh, Akama, uh, formerly the SAR, formerly known as Rabbit, and uh, uh, Silicon Systems, and of course, Silver Stripe. So thank you all to those companies. Uh, help with that. Uh, and now, just to keep things moving, my, my, my final job here is to um, welcome our keynote speaker to the stadium. Um, this is Ian Cormack. Uh, Ian has had a really interesting and varied career. I've got to try and get this right. Uh, he's been a teacher, a lecturer, a marriage counselor, of course, who wouldn't be, an inspector, 
uh, an author, an editor, and a translator. Uh, but Ian is most well known for his lifelong commitment and championship of Te Reo Mori. Uh, he's one of the New Zealand's leading translators. Um, in his first, when he was first teaching, I think in the late 60s and early 70s, there were no textbooks suitable for um, what he was trying to teach. Uh, and so he wrote his own textbooks. And he's still writing textbooks for teaching Te Reo Māori uh, for N at NZCA level and, and so on. Um, he used to be uh, the uh, national advisor to Eero uh, for Te Reo Māori. Uh, and when he wrote his reports, he wrote them in, in Māori. And um, in the 1990s, when maybe the media wasn't so friendly to uh, the idea of a bicultural society, his work would be OIA'd. And so, of course, he would send, send them these reports, and the media companies would say, oh, we don't understand. They said, well, do you know what you should do? It's an official language. Employ a translator. <laughs> so, so that's the kind of person uh, Ian is. And today, uh, he and his wife, Shirley, uh, run uh, Tomatua Māori Language Services, and we know Ian for the work that he does translating open source software. Uh, so the projects like Koha and Mahara, which are world leading and world famous open source software projects are translated uh, um, by Ian. So uh, that's uh, why one of the reasons Ian's here. The second reason is he's Chris Cormack's dad. And that's good enough for every, anyone. Ian. Um, what I wanted to talk to you about very, very briefly, um, so not to hold up next course, um, is localization of software. Um, it's a very new profession in New Zealand. Uh, I think the first piece of software to be localized into Māori um, was Windows 7, so that was in the early 2000s. It's called localization because it doesn't just deal with translation across languages in, in terms of software, but it also deals with translation between variants of a language. About 10% of the work that, that uh, my wife and our company does is US English to New Zealand localization. Sometimes software, sometimes health pamphlets and things like that. And you may be interested to know that, that um, variants of English are not getting closer together, they're actually diverging. And that will continue to diverge as people use language as an identity marker. But to switch to, to, to Māori, um, when I looked at Wikipedia researching this, I discovered that there are 8, 000, more than 8,500 programming languages in the world. And I couldn't believe that, but, but um, I double-checked, and, and yes, there are. Close to half of those have been written or developed in the US, in US um, or in other British Commonwealth countries. Only 100 of those programming languages have been developed in languages other than English. There are only 6,900 languages currently spoken in the world, dying out at the rate of 100 to 200 a year. So there are more programming languages than there are languages spoken in the world. Now, as a, as a translator or localizer of, of software into Māori, this, this poses some problems. 
Most programs will be coded, developed, written using English-based languages, and the text strings, therefore, in most cases, will be written in English first. Oops, sorry. Ah. One of the difficulties you have is that word order. Normal word order English is subject, verb, object. You have added the email address, for example. In Māori, the word order is different. Māori usually puts the verb first, then the subject, then the object. So if you've got a lots of tags and things that you have to fit in, coding tags, then you have to change them around. So kutapuri kwe te wahito imara is, is that in, in Māori, but the verb add is at the start, tapuri. About half the languages in the world stick the adjective describing word in front of the noun. The other half stick it after. Māori is one of those. Like most Pacific languages, um, then the describing word goes after the noun that it describes. So whereas in English you say a big house, in Māori you say he, he, whare nui, a house big. One other difficulty is pronouns. English we have the word you. Māori has three yous. So you've got to determine which you is being talked about, whether it's you, one, or you, two, kōrua, or you, three. Other languages like Arabic, for example, have six U's. Um, one for one woman, one for two women, and one for three or more women, one for one man, one for two men, and one for three or more men. So when you're localizing software, there's quite often a lot of questions have to go back to the developer, is what do, act do you actually mean? One of the difficulties is the space that the letters and the words take. Now, in English, it's very easy. Most English words, apart from a few like ox and oxen and child and children, just simply add S to the end. So if the word device is six letters, uh, six spaces long, then device is, is just seven. In Māori, it's not quite that simple because the word for Māori for device, pūrere, isn't singular or plural, it's both. So there are no plurals apart from about seven words in Māori. So you have to add something to the front to show that it's plural. In this case, ngā, which means da in the plural form. So that adds an extra four spaces to the translation of word. And if you're tight in a menu, then you have difficulties with that. Um, you could use what we call hepuriri, which means a device, but it also means some devices or devices. So it means both singular and plural. So that doesn't help if you're trying to translate simply a device. And another way of saying is teete puriri, which as you see there has moved it up to eight spaces. Now, I wanted to talk about a linguistic challenge that I, had, I faced when I was translating um, Open App, which was in a menu, a pull down menu. Now, the most common translate for that is Fukatu Fera Te Topanga, which is, you see, is somewhat longer than Open App. <laughs> it didn't fit into the pull down menu. So, had to shorten it and used a shorter way of saying open, which is huakina. Huakina te topanga, open the app. In Māori. Then the answer came back, or well, the question came back from the, the developer, could you please shorten it? It's too long. So I went to huaki topanga, which actually means, it's sort of a, a verb noun put together, it means open apps. It has a plural sense. But I thought, well, we're going to have to bend the rules of grammar to fit this in. So we'll assume that open apps can be read as open app. 
So we left it as that, sent it off. It came back, it's too, still too long. Will you please shorten it? And they said, we've done some consul consultation and we've found that you could shorten the word topanga uh, to topa. The word pa means to touch and panga means the act of touching. Um, and I said, well, well, you could, but topa exists as a word. It means barrier, obstruction. It also refers to a part of the female anatomy which you don't normally talk about in public, <laughs> which you can probably work out from that word, from the English meanings. I refused to, to put that in. Anyway, I left that and about two, two or three months later, I was looking through the software. I saw it and I had a look through and sure enough, there it was, Huaki Topa. Um, needless to say, for that and other reasons, um, the company and we parted ways after that. Why is it going backwards? Oh, I've got it upside down. No wonder it's going backwards. <laughs> come out right but my question would be is if you have a software program or if you're a developer or if you're hiring someone to write software or any of those then the question is what can you do to make it easier for a localizer noting that English is n notable because the fact it can be so compact as I showed you with open app most other languages are not and it's very, very difficult often to translate an English expression into Māori or another language and get it grammatically correct in the space that's allocated. So a good rule of thumb is to design a program and allow an extra 50%. So that, that in that case, you would cover almost every language in the world if you wanted to, to um, localise it. Anoreira, etenewa. I'll just finish here. Thank you very much. Tēnā koe, Ian. Our dinner will be on the way really soon, so please relax, get to know your neighbours some more and enjoy. And um, when you see me again, it'll be time for the presentations to begin. See you soon. And so begins the exciting part. So from here I will welcome each judge to the stage to introduce the nominees and finally the winner for each category. Um, there will be a pile of envelopes in front of me and I'm very aware not to accidentally shuffle them around nervously, but I'm also reminded that it can't possibly be worse than the Academy Awards last year. <laughs> so everything's gonna be fine. Um, award winners will be invited to come up to the stage and I'll encourage you to come up this way, all judges and award winners to come in from this side and that way when that moment happens and you kind of reach out your hand, it's all right in the middle in the perfect place and um, we don't end up kind of crunched up over here by the podium. So, well, award winners will be invited to come up onto the stage, receive their award, hold that handshake for just a moment too long to catch a photograph, and then make a very short speech if they'd like to. I've been advised to help keep things moving, so if I'll do my best to give an evil eye. I'm actually terribly bad at giving an evil eye. But I'll, if I can give an evil eye, I'll give you one if you're taking too long on your speech. So, here we go. The very first award tonight is for open source use in business, and presenting the award as the judge for this category, taking the right way round, please welcome back to the stage, Don Christie. Thank you, Catherine. Have you noticed our MC always turns up with an empty glass in her hand? And have you noticed also, I hope, that we have New Zealand's third official language on stage, the sign language? Okay. 
Uh, so, uh, in a quirk of programming, you get me twice a bit concertinaed. Uh, apologies for that. Um, the business category to me is one that's quite dear to my heart, running an open source business for 21 years. One of the things that I think the finalists really demonstrate is the, the willingness to create an ecosystem uh, 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 in New Zealand that allows us to give each other a leg up. So by sharing what other companies would consider their own intellectual property or whatever, we are just giving away our capability to allow anyone else to, without permission, to use that um, technology in this case and give themselves and give ourselves a leg up and hopefully give our whole economy and New Zealand a leg up as well. So that really epitomizes the finalists, I would say, in this section. So let's get straight into it. And first up we have da -da 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 -da, David Sparks and Sparks Interactive who have built their own Drupal distribution for New Zealand called sector.org.nz to share so we can all set up our content management systems on a basic infrastructure uh, and share that with all our clients and hopefully make a lot of money out of that. So thank you, Sparks Interactive. Uh, next up, Silverstripe Limited, another you know, old hand in the open source world, have created you know, one of the world's greatest uh, open source content management systems. The New Zealand government wisely chose it to be the CWP for the entire government sector, and they just this year moved to version two of that. Uh, and so we're all uh, looking forward to using that technology for all the new government websites we build. So congratulations to Silverstripe for that one. And finally, uh, uh, the Catalyst Cloud team, uh, who I could wax on for a long time about, but this specifically is for the way the Cloud team has worked with the open uh, stack community globally to build some really critical infrastructure, not just for Catalyst Clouds, but for every open stack user in the world. So congratulations to the Catalyst Cloud team on that. And the winner is, I'd like to say there was a card in this envelope, but it's written on the front. <laughs> the winner is David Sparks and Sparks Interactive. Well, uh, thanks everyone. Uh, thanks to the New Zealand Open Source Awards and the uh, open source community that I see before us and that surrounds us here in Wellington. Uh, I just want to say what a fantastic celebration for open source this night is. Um, we are humbled and honoured to receive this award. I'd just like to say thanks to the team who are with me tonight. Uh, thanks to Heike, who's the sector product owner, and Tom, and Nigel, and Daniel. And thanks to Forrest and Bird who are with us tonight, uh, who have been a client with us for a long time and came on this open source journey uh, with us. Thanks. Congratulations, Sparks Interactive. So the next award for tonight is for open source use in government. Uh, presenting the award is the judge for this category, Edwin Bruce. Uh, Edwin teaches digital technologies at Wellington East Girls College and is the unofficial CIO for the college just without the business card. He is a learner, a teacher facilitator and an ICT professional for many years. Please welcome to the stage Edwin Bruce to, pre to present this award. So I always feel greatly um, pleased when the opportunity presents itself to uh, be a judge on the Open Source Awards. Um, I said to a classroom this afternoon, I said, well, I literally said, great Scott, that man. 
I've got to present something tonight, and I better better do a little bit of revision. Um, so I actually took the took the students through the awards, and as as it turns out, I mean I've got the one from a couple of years ago of this, and there's some really inspirational stories in here. And when you're teaching computer science, which at the best of times is a pretty dry subject, it's good to have inspirational stories because if there's one thing that I've learned about students, they love to know how to save the world and make life better. And for that reason, a lot of the open source projects really do align with some of the values of the students that we've got coming through the schools at the moment. So without further ado, um, I'd like to announce the finalists for the open source and government category. First up, Ministry of Social Development for the test automation framework. Now explaining that to students was a pretty tough call today. <laughs> but having said that, they quite liked the concept of automated testing and a framework for automated testing and then they had to start thinking about software that wrote software and that kind of did their heads in. But they kind of got the message. So the second finalist is the New Zealand Electoral Commission for the Election Management System Redevelopment. Again, that was kind of an easy sell. Okay, we have, uh, the girls have just participated in some elections for representation on the school council. And again, they understood the importance of having voting software you could trust, it was transparent. Um, and so they can completely buy into it being open source development. So again, that was a, a real easy story to tell and, and inspirational to a number of them. Okay, and lastly, we have the Service Innovation Lab for actually a range of initiatives written down as the Rates Rebate Service, Family Services Directory and a bunch of other APIs. But of note is just the way in which they work in a collaborative and innovative fashion with other government organisations. Again, talking to the girls about God help us, government departments, because uh, they haven't been exposed to government very much yet, and I keep warning them that in a couple of years' time they have to deal with you know, student loans and all those good things. But um, I did sell them on the concept that some of those services were about improving the lives of New Zealanders, and again, that's a bit of an easy sell. Um, and also the fact that, you know, being able to work in an innovative, collaborative way in government and no, they're not mutually exclusive terms. And that's what I guess the uh, Service Innovation Lab's all about. So, let's see who the winner is today. So, the winner for the open source using government is the Service Innovation Lab. Um, thank you so much, everybody. Um, I, there are so many people that oh, <laughs> I feel like I need to thank that I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit it all in. So uh, I'd like to say thank you so much for uh, the work that Tauranga City Council did in helping us with the rates rebate. Uh, alpha work, that was amazing, and the collaboration was really awesome as well as... Um, DIA as well for that. Uh, the Family Services Directory, MSD. Uh, Brenda could probably talk to that more, but no time. Um, and we've done some really awesome stuff in the last year and a bit <laughs> that we've been around and collaborated with lots of different people. So I wish I could put that all into one speech, but yeah, thank you, everybody. <laughs> Congratulations, Service Innovation Lab. It's awesome. 
Uh, next up is the award for Open Source Use in Education, Youth and Social Services. And presenting this award, we have the judge for this category, who is Chris Wehipehana. Uh, Chris is the library manager for a Wellington tertiary education provider. Uh, she's previously the president of New Zealand's Library Association and formerly a judge for the Wellington Theatre Awards. Please welcome Chris to present this award. Tina koto kato himihi tine ki a koto ko ahare mai tine poa. Mihi ohu also to te mana finua of the space to te papa the fare te ronga morai roa where we are, and uh, a huge mihi to ronga fakata, who uh, the exhibition who was out the front as we walked through to come in here. They um, host the school that I work at, Toi Fakari, the New Zealand Drama School, every year. We take about 300 people to this tiny little settlement of Manutuki and they host us in their marae. Usually we take over about um, three marae, which is six whare, because it's real small. Um, one of the things that we go there for, one of the reasons we go there is for community and to learn about community and how to be a better community within our institution. And one of the things I've really enjoyed about tonight is watching you as a community. I have seen you, this might sound a bit creepy, but I have seen you get up from your table and go to one, two, three, six tables to say hello to people. I have seen you in between courses, and I've done this myself, just sitting next to someone and going blah, 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 while they're trying to eat their dinner, and they're making them talk to you. Um, I'm very good at asking questions when someone's about to eat something or has got something in their mouth. Um, one of the reasons I'm very excited and delighted to be presenting this award for the um, Open Source and Education Social Services and Youth is because our nominees are really concerned about community. They're really concerned about the health of their community, about the health of the individuals within the community, but also about the system that the community works in. Uh, and it was quite tricky for the judges to decide, um, but I'm going to tell you the nominees and then I will tell you who our winner is. So our nominees for the award in open source in education, social service and youth are Amber Craig, Brenda Wallace and Hiria Terangi for Whare Hauora Census. So Whare Hauora is a registered charity which is working towards an Aotearoa where your home doesn't make you sick. We all know about mould in our homes, coldness, misery, um, people get really sick all the time. Um, through their current uh, consumer model of buy one, gift one, um, and using open source software and hardware, they empower communities to build sensors which measure room temperature and humidity. And with that hard information, Fano can track and then can make changes to their environments for a healthier home. Which means they spend less money on healthcare and more money on the things that um, will provide a better style of life for them. Our second nominee is Auckland University of Technology, Te Wananga o Aranui o Tamaki Makaurau for Tuwhera. And Tuwhera is an open access scholarly publishing platform built using open journal system. Um, and in two years, they've become host to eight peer-reviewed journals, which is pretty good for an open source um, university based in New Zealand. And the bit that I particularly like is that most of them have strong indigenous connections, and they have a philosophy and kaupapa that is based on empowering indigenous communities. And within the university, the philosophies of openness demonstrated in Tuwhera have been recognised and championed by the library executive. And these principles are now included in their strategic documents. And our final nominee, whose name I actually had to check to say how to pronounce it, um, Lillian Hetet Owen from the Hetet School of Māori Art for making real her vision of giving opportunities to women prisoners in New Zealand through access to online weaving courses so they could have tradable skills when they were released. Using Drupal as an integrated platform for content management, e-commerce and customer rela relationship management, the Hetet School of Māori Art has been able to partner with a significant government organisation and achieve some of their social and educational objectives. All of those uh, nominees are particularly worthy, but there can only be one winner. And so the winner for the Open Source and Education, Social Services and Youth is... Auckland University of Technology Library for two fera.
Well, tēnā koutou katoa, no Tamaki Makaura hau, hi kaitiaki puka puka o ke te wānanga o Arunui o Tamaki Makaura. Ko Lukman Hayes toko ingoa. Ko Donna Coventry a hau. The story of Tuwhera is one with the meaning of the word, being open, opening up. We started in 2016 as a, a journal hosting platform supporting a small number of academics at AUT. We've grown quite quickly, as you just heard, uh, to build sites for other forms of scholarship and to connect parts of our research collections under the Tuwhera name. It's quite timely that we should receive this award and it's amazing that we do because this is Open Access Week throughout the world. And the theme of Open Access Week is designing and building equitable foundations for sharing research, for open access. In the face of a world of publisher paywalls and restricted access to research, we've operated with the principal aim of making the content, those ideas, and that knowledge in the research that we have open to the world. Our philosophy has evolved with our own changing shape. It has informed our work and our relationships as a team. Two Feta's co-papa of openness is built upon an understanding that knowledge exists to be shared for the wider benefit of the communities it springs from. In this, we see parallels with the Māori concepts and ideals such as ako, afe, manaki, and manatangata. These concepts have the potential to transcend Two Feta and help inform open, the open access movement in Aotearoa in a way which is uniquely Pacific and biculturally aware. So this award is a, an acknowledgement not only of our work, but of, of that movement. None of this can be done in isolation, of course, and we firmly believe in being part of a supportive and an egalitarian community. And to that end, I would like to thank a fantastic team at AUT Library. Donna Coventry, <laughs> Rudy Ben Marley, Craig Murdoch, uh, Pierre Shen, and Jackie Chen for all of their contributions, and to Shari Hearn and Kim Tidy for allowing us the space and the kind of stupidity to do what we do and to run with our ideas. Thank you too, of course, to the open source community and especially the Public Knowledge Project, um, developers of the open pub publishing systems which we use and we adapt. Na tororo. Uh, na taku raro, ka ora ai te iwi. Kia ora, thank you. Congratulations, AUT and the Two Feta team. Awesome. Uh, now we have the much anticipated award for open source software project. Uh, the judge for this category is Pia Andrews, who unfortunately could not be with us tonight. So, in her stead, we welcome Jason Ryan, who is a committed open source contributor himself. He's strategy and relations manager at Catalyst IT, and he's also a previous judges panel convener for these awards. So, welcome, Jason. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm just going to get straight into it. The first of the nominees for Open Source Project is Akamar for the Online Dictionary of New Zealand Sign Language. Um, and I'd just like to take a moment to give props to Bridget and Shoshana for the awesome work they're doing tonight. <laughs> Akamar worked with Victoria University to develop an online dictionary in all three of our official languages, sign, English, and te reo Māori. Kaupai. I looked it up in the dictionary. Um, second up, the second uh, nomination, the second finalist is the New Zealand ORCID Hub, which uh, ORCID stands for Open Research and Contributor ID. So this is an important project which provides a unique identifier for linking researchers with their contributions. Um, it enables accurate attribution and is machine readable data integration. So it removes an ambiguity and ensures that when the singularity arrives, these are uh, people with awesome credentials will be spared.
it's going to happen. Third up, um, the Fawcett Software Defined Network Controller. This is an open flow controller for multi-table router switches. So Fawcett moves network control functions away from proprietary stacks and into open source software. It uses open standard APIs to program devices and it does so at scale, currently 16 terabytes per second. That, my friends, is not number eight wire. So, the winner of the open source software project for 2018 is the Fawcett Foundation for Fawcett's SDN Controller Project. So first of all, we'd like to say thank you to the judges because obviously without them we wouldn't be here. <laughs> um, yeah, we're a little bit stunned to be here. We're, we're pretty impressed with, amongst this group of uh, finalists who are obviously <laughs> contributing so much to slices of New Zealand society. Um, I guess as an open source project, we really have to thank the developers. Um, two of the key developers are here. We've got Chris Laurier, who wrote the first code that was called Fawcett, um, <coughs> and has been sort of doing the architecture for since. Brad is, is Fawcett's Mr. Everything guy. He sort of solves all the problems and makes everything happen. And um, the lastly is, is Josh Bailey. Um, Josh and his, his boss, Stephen Stewart, have really contributed a huge amount to Fawcett. And, have made um, it what it is today, I guess. Um, Josh couldn't be here tonight because he's in Dallas, Texas, building the, the uh, multi-terabit network, supporting the, the supercomputer com conference. And I think that's the example of what force has become. It's a small New Zealand project that is now really making a splash internationally in terms of, of network infrastructure. And um, we're really proud of, of where we've got to. So thank you very much. Okay, I have a thing to add. So, Fawcett is not complicated software. Um, SDN is sort of the, uh, it's the white whale of networks. It's esoteric, you don't really need to understand it, but everyone wants it, but nobody knew who was gonna do the work. And we just did it, and it kind of grew from there. And I think it's, it's just a thing that, that people should take into consideration that it's not, Hard, just just do it, and uh, you can uh, actually achieve some things that like will blow your mind when you first take that first step of actually doing something like this. Cheers. Congratulations to the Fawcett Foundation. Um, I don't know about you, I'm kind of getting to the point where I want to jump up and congratulate someone. So um, this will be our last award before we take a brief break for dessert. So next up we have the open source contributor category. And this category will be presented by the judge Dave Lane. Um, Dave is the president of the New Zealand Open Source Society. He advocates for the greater use and contribution of free and open source software by organisations in both the public and private sectors, and he advocates for mandatory open standards for government. Uh, so without further ado, welcome back to Dave. Tēnā koutou i tēnē ai ai. Lovely to be with you all this evening, and it's very exciting, as every other time I've been to these awards, to see such a great and dynamic community turn up in force. Um, um, open source has long had a, um, a bit of a uh, stigma, I suppose, associated with the idea that you have to be a developer to, in order to be a, com a contributor. And many times have I heard people say, I think this open source thing is really cool, but I'm not a developer, so I, don't want, I have no idea what I can do with it. And um, I'm very pleased to say that uh, this year the judging has been um, very exciting because um, it's clear that... Um, people don't have to be developers to make a real, important, vital contribution 
to free and open source software. Um, in fact, I actually think that we could extend the programmer's crone, which I was recently made aware of, um, and it resonated with me. Um, you can extend this to beyond programming. You can extend this to things like building communities and writing documentation and uh, encouraging people to get involved in open source, free and open source projects. Um, the, the developer's crone um, is, we did it not because it was easy. We did it because we thought it would be easy. Um, so without further ado, uh, <laughs> I think that, that applies across a lot of different domains. <laughs> um, without further ado, the first finalist is Desley Simons. I think, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And she is the community manager for the Totra government user group. Um, it's clear from, from the sorts of glowing recommendations that came with her application that she's really um, had a big impact on a lot of people. And so for those of you who don't know, the Totra system is a, uh, a fork of the uh, Moodle uh, learning management system used in a kind of a corporate context. And, and it's really been spearheaded from here in, in Wellington and New Zealand in general. And so Desley has done great work um, in building up the community around this uh, government user group. And uh, particularly, she's been successful in supporting women to enter this field. And um, so that's really great to see. And the next finalist is Neil Creswell. And he's the driving force behind the development of the Portainer software solution, which um, uh, actually is designed to make it easier for people to make use of a very important tool nowadays, which some of you may have heard of called Docker. Um, he, I've just been sitting at the table with him just now, and apparently the Portainer software has now been downloaded 700 million times. So this is potentially sort of world-changing type software. Um, so from here in Aotearoa, he's had a huge impact on a, on a burgeoning area in, in computing in general, which is container management and doing it without being a developer. Um, so the next... Finalist is Robert Lyon. Robert uh, has worked on the Mahara project uh, for quite a few years by the looks of it. Um, he has uh, been working both as a developer and as a community um, advocate and working within, both, both having had a big part in four major feature releases of Mahara. And I think there's another one coming out very soon, so that's probably five. And what's more, he's, he's shown a great generosity in working with the community uh, that ensures that that, that that particular project has been such a great success. I know that um, a lot of people, I've, I've been telling a lot of people lately about um, the Mahara Portfolio Management System for students, so I know that um, it's being used all across New Zealand and many other parts of the world as well. And finally, we have Victoria Spagnolo, and she um, has been a major contributor in the Drupal project, something that's near and dear to my heart, having spent many, many years um, trying to unravel the mysteries of Drupal, which never seemed to become any more apparent. But she has managed not only to, um, not only to work out, uh, to support the community that's building migration tools for the Drupal project, um, but also generally improve the community as a whole. And um, she also has, has made great effort to um, improve the documentation. And, and I can't imagine why anyone would want to migrate away from Drupal. I'm assuming, I'm assuming they're all migrating to Drupal. But either way, it's a very, very valuable contribution to the um, open source, the massive Drupal open source community. And the winner is Victoria Spagnolo. Congratulations. Is she here? Is Victoria here? Ah, here she comes. This comes as quite a shock, and I'm not one to say a whole lot, even amongst my family and friends. Um, and I know I'm speaking to 
the people already understand this, but all I have to say really is sharing is good. We need to do more of it and help each other. So ends part one. Um, take a break, enjoy your break, enjoy your dessert, and we'll see you back soon. Congratulations to all of the people and projects that, is, that have received awards so far tonight. It's actually pretty amazing to be surrounded by you all, hear all your stories, hear all the ways all your systems are being used. Very, very cool. Thank you so much for sharing everything. Um, we're going to plough straight into the next batch of awards. I'm really looking forward to it. So the next category this evening is the Open Science Award. Um, this award will be presented by the category judge, Joy Liddycoat. Joy is a lawyer and vice president of Internet NZ. Joy specialises in human rights and the internet. She's a former human rights commissioner. Joy works for the University of Otago now on, New Zealand law, on a New Zealand Law Foundation project, exploring the legal implications of artificial intelligence. Please join me in welcoming Joy to present the Open Science Award. Kia ora tato, nā mihi ki a koutou i tēnei pō. Um, it's my pleasure to uh, present the finalists and the winner of the Open Source Use and Science Award. People might think, you know, what on earth is a human rights lawyer doing introducing a science award? I mean, how do those two things go together? Um, well, the great thing is that um, both the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the International Covenant on Economic, Cultural and Social Rights um, laid forth the right to the benefits of scientific advancement and its applications as a founding human right and fundamental value. So really what that's about is saying we all have the right to benefit from you know, things like antibiotics or vaccinations or new research and new science and technology that can benefit us all. And that's, I think, very much the values of open source. Um, and so it's my pleasure to introduce four exciting and dynamic and very different finalists um, in the Open Source Use in Science Award. Um, so the first of these is David Winter. Um, now, David um, has made a unique contribution around something that's known as reproducibility. Uh, now, reproducibility is to do with this concept that um, results can be reproduced more than once and then used by others for common benefit. Um, and it's particularly true in areas of research where the processes are using large amounts of data sets, um, you know, for example, billions of DNA um, uh, bases in genomic science. And David's contributed to this um, field in quite a unique way over many years um, by developing uh, software under open source licenses, um, contributing to open source projects, publishing under Creative Commons licenses, and teaching other people to do the same. So please, put your hands together for David Winter. Um, thank you, David. Thank you very much. Um, our, our second finalist um, is the Kia Sightings Project. Um, now, this is a, 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 a really exciting and um, creative um, project, uh, kiadatabase.nz. It's used for tracking the well-being of individual kia, which is a threatened um, native alpine parrot. And it's designed to support citizen science so that through the use of APIs and public engagement, um, the public can become engaged in saving the plight of this cheeky, mischievous, amazing, intelligent, creative bird. Um, and we, we, the judges, thought this was a great example of free and open source software. So your hands together, please, for the kia. <laughs> kia sighting. Um, the third, we've got um, Met Ocean Solutions, so from the mountains to the sea. Um, Met Ocean recently released the scientific processing library as open source to encourage science and community around ocean wave analysis. 
mind-blowingly amazing. Um, it's a powerful collection of tools to um, process and write spectra in common formats that others can use, um, including parameters such as wave height, period, direction, and um, partitioning waves for different types of sea swells. So, Met Ocean Solutions. Thank you. Our fourth and final um, uh, finalist here is the Software Carpentry Project, another amazing um, uh, collaboration. It's an international active um, not-for-profit um, organisation that has over 2,000 instructors from 39 countries. Um, using workshops to uh, raise awareness and developing software skills in the research community um, with the intention that the tools used for research can be shared within and outside the research community to increase transparency and reproducibility. Again, amazing values, very much um, a strong finalist in this category. Put your hands together for you. Yeah. Um, so, the winner is the Kia Sightings Project for the Kia database. Congratulations. Uh, kia ora koutou. Uh, I didn't actually prepare any remarks because given the other finalists, you know, they're pretty incredible. So to get this award is pretty stunning. Um, I'd like to thank the two other people that um, have worked with me on this project, um, Mark Braben and Laura Young. Neither of them could be here tonight, so it's just me. Um, I'd also like to thank my employers, Catalyst. I've been with them for a while now and they supported not only the project but this amazing evening uh, uh, this evening. Um, and uh, for those of you who don't know it, yeah, the Kia is a mountainous alpine parrot found in the South Island. Um, the project's been going just over a year and we've had over 2,100 sightings. That's over four per day, which is pretty incredible. Um, we've got advocacy, people can sponsor birds, um, people can learn about the Kia, and we're actually getting useful scientific data and the Department of Conservation is even going to build on it to um, help with their scientific surveys. Um, and for me it's ideal, um, open source was the logical choice, there's no other way you can do this sort of thing. We've had other sighting projects come to us and say, hey, can we use your code? Um, you know, in Wellington you have the kaka, you know, it'd be pretty cool to be able to go up and say, oh, I saw this kaka, his name is Bruce and he hangs out in the trees. <laughs> um, so, yeah, thank you very much, I'm stoked. <laughs> Congratulations, George and the Kia Sightings Project. Very, very cool. So next up, we have the Open Source Use in the Arts Award. And um, this award will be presented by the category judge, Bronwyn Holloway-Smith. Uh, Bronwyn is an investiga investigative artist and researcher based in Wellington. Uh, she, in fact, won this award in both 2010 and 2012, so consequently had to be made into a judge. <laughs> Recently, she exhibited with the City Gallery of Wellington and had her book, Wanted, published by Mass University Press. You can, I think, read more in the program. Um, so welcome back to the stage, Bronwyn, to present this award. Tēnā koutou katoa. <laughs> Um, I'm sure it's not news to any of you here tonight that open source is more about just software, more about, about more than just software. It's a philosophy, an ethical framework, a culture. Funnily enough, reinventing the wheel doesn't tend to lead to human development and flourishing. And restrictions on access can drive us to spend time rehashing problems that have already been solved. Open source thinking, often licensed under Creative Commons, promotes the opening up and freeing of ideas that have, and resources so that they're accessible to all. It's a kind of generosity and efficiency that invests trust and confidence in the people around us. This category is a little bit different to the others. These finalists are not all necessarily software-based, but they demonstrate ways in which open source culture 
is contributing to growing the intellectual commons, and the nominees are Matt McKegg for his contribution to open source music tools and performance through LoopDrop.js. LoopDrop.js is a fully open source looper, modular synth, and sampler designed for improvisation and live performance. It's a homegrown example of how code and creativity can be combined in a unique open source based musical performance that has been live tested at local and international events, including during Matt's recent tour of Europe. Let's hear it from Matt McKeg and Luke Prop. <laughs> And next, the Wellington Independent Arts Trust for Urban Dream Brokerage. For the last five years, the Urban Dream Brokerage has provided a physical open sourcing service of vacant city sites, licensing and facilitating spaces for 61 art and community projects in Wellington, 26 projects in Dunedin, 12 in Porirua, and six in Masterton. The UDB provided tools and resources that gave reassurance to property owners about the safe care of their properties while freeing up the city to those who wouldn't otherwise gain access to CBD retail and office sites. This is a significant application of open source philosophy in physical space, making closed resources open and facilitating their open usage. The scale of this project has had ongoing ripple effects in the communities it has operated in. Great stuff, guys. And the final nominee is the Wellington Irish Sessions for preserving and opening traditional Irish music. Irish traditional music is community-based music with a large repertoire of tunes that each player learns, is typically played in sessions in public venues. The Wellington Irish Session has built a website of resources for learning Irish music that provides a basis for their weekly sessions, which run from 7.30 p.m. every Tuesday at the Welsh Dragon Bar. And I'd like to give a shout out to Ted and Co for coming here instead of going to their session tonight. <laughs> Kia for that. <laughs> Many of the resources on their website are licensed under Creative Commons, and the framework has been made available under an open source license. The project itself relies on using open source technology, and the website uses the W3C web audio standard. And it's so cool that I want to come along and hear you play and maybe join in with my very rusty violin skills, so thank you. <laughs> And the winner is the Wellington Independent Arts Trust for the Urban Dream Brokerage. It's beautiful to be here. Um, what are a whole lot of uh, space brokers doing at an Open Source Awards? Um, as Bronwyn said, we've been uh, really influenced by the, the philosophy and principles of open source um, thinking, and we have utilised a lot of open source software, mostly Lumio, um, to make decisions. So that's allowed us very much to access the city's spaces in a much more efficient way than would have ever been possible had we been um, trying to do this manually. Um, so we've, we really believe in open sourcing the city. Why not use spaces for other people's um, benefit when 
the property market's down. We're, we're currently in a bit of a, in a, in a lull period with Wellington because Wellington is chocker and the earthquakes have taken out a lot of buildings. But Dunedin is still thriving and other places around the, uh, the world um, are looking at our model and we're currently developing an open source uh, piece with some Belgian um, uh, open space brokers as well. Um, to, to, sh to share the technology with the world. But I just wanted to say thanks to all the wonderful projects that have um, taken over spaces in the city in the last five years. Also, obviously, to the property owners, um, to our amazing trust, the Wellington Independent Arts Trust, with Madam uh, Chair Gaylene Preston and Jan Beringer supporting us for the last nine years and all the projects we've done. Um, and, yeah, to... to um, to the city of Wellington, which has actually supported our work as a not-for-profit trust all this time. So, well done, and keep going. <laughs> Congratulations to the Wellington Independent Arts Trust. Let me find my place on the page. Next, we have a special prize, the Clinton Bodoni Prize for Open Systems. This award is administered by the Department of Computer Science at Auckland University, and tonight it will be presented by Ulish Bildil. Welcome to the stage, Ulish. Tēnā koutou katoa no Germany ahau, ko Isenbügler Kopf te maunga, Koro te awa, ko Tamaki Makauro te Farawananga, ke Tamaki Makauro taka koinga, kainga, ko Ori Spider toko ingoa. Tena koto, tena koto, tena koto katoa. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name's Ori Spider, and um, I'm here representing, as you've just been told, the uh, Department of Computer Science at the University of Auckland. Um, as you'll probably be aware, uh, we are awarding the uh, uh, Clinton Bodoni Prize here every second year, and uh, tonight's one of those um, occasions again. Um, so before I go and present the finalists to you, let me tell you a little bit about the uh, background of the prize. The Clinton Bodoni Prize was established by the Bodoni family in memory of their eldest son, uh, Clinton, who passed away well before his time in uh, June 2005. And if he were still alive, there's a very good probability he'd actually be here tonight because um, he was a, a great fan of open source and uh, I'm told was uh, really proficient playing around with Linux and anything open source he could get his hands on. In fact, he was so passionate about this that his family decided um, to uh, establish a memorial fund um, after his death and um, they asked our department to look after that fund and um, uh, uh, so today the um, fund basically supports two different um, uh, projects. One of uh, them is the price which we're about to award here. The other one is the Clinton Bodoni Fellowship in Open Systems Research. And I'm mentioning this here because we're about to re-advertise that. And so if there's anyone here with a recent PhD um, or about to be completed PhD in Open Systems or uh, um, uh, or um, you know, open source, then uh, you know, keep that on your list. Um, uh, it's a fellowship that's tenable for two to three years, so just a bit of a heads up and a bit of an advertising cameo in here, right? So um, basically, so far, we've um, uh, awarded the prize uh, four times. Tonight's the fifth time. And um, this year, we were a little bit late in actually advertising the prize. Um, but we struck it really, really lucky. We actually got four very, very strong finalists. So, in fact, they left us so impressed that we had real trouble picking out um, a winner. So, we initially thought, hey, um, let's go and split the prize. Can we do this? And the, they came back and said, no, no. So, the, the rules say you have to pick a single winner. Okay. So, we put a new special voting procedure in that got us to score the applicants. And even then, the scores came pretty close. So... It wasn't an easy choice, but we did get a winner. Um, but what it basically means, they've all deserved an introduction tonight. So I'll just quickly you know, uh, run through them. So um, uh, A and Rob, um, so not in that order necessarily. So A and Rob uh, works as a senior developer at Optometrics in Christchurch. Oh. 
um, and his specialty is in reverse engineering and opening closed source protocols, um, especially for messenger applications, and um, uh, his particular uh, uh, contribution in this area has been to develop plugins for Pigeon, which is an open source messaging application, and um, also for its underlying library libpurple. Um, and what that basically allows open source users to do is to um, communicate with otherwise sort of closed protocols um, and, and closed applications such as Skype or Facebook, MetaMost, Yahoo, and Google Hangouts. Um, he's also served as the president of the Internet, uh, Instant Messaging Freedom Organization, a charity devoted um, uh, to um, opening and documenting instant messaging, messaging protocols. And his code is used by tens of thousands of users. And he has actually been uh, an open, an open Source Awards finalist before in 2010. Uh, for his contributions to the Vin uh, Vinix Linux distro, which aims itself at uh, vision-impaired users. So um, the uh, uh, second finalist on my list here is uh, Clemens Seidler. And Clemens is actually back there. Clemens, put your hand up. Right. So uh, Clemens is well known to me. Um, he's a, a most recent uh, or most recent donor fellow at the University of Auckland. And I played a small role in um, uh, hiring him. I think I was on the interview panel, and I also um, I got a few references in. And his contributions are quite manifold. So he made significant contributions to the Heiko uh, operating system with hundreds of thousands of users, uh, where he's been responsible for the operating system stack and tile window manager. And uh, um, when we hired him, I got to interview um, uh, him, of course, and then uh, also talk to one of the referees who was the head of our uh, very own physics department. And Clemens had written um, uh, the, the LabLet software that um, they use there, and um, um, uh, the head of the physics department could basically not uh, stop swooning about it. He was so happy with what it done to their labs. And um, basically, in the, t the time he's been with us at Auckland in the last few years, and he's now you know, defected to Unitech, so to speak. He's contributed a lot to um, a secure, portable, and privacy-preserving storage, and we've seen this mentioned already tonight um, in the context of the Fijoa project, uh, which was also shortlisted um, for one of the earlier awards. Finalist number three, Dr. Richard Lobb. Um, and Richard and I also go a long time back. Um, he was already a bit of a legend in Auckland uh, when I was there as a PhD student in 1994. And um, then when I rejoined as a lecturer, he basically stuck around for another three years and then did some walker jumping, went down to Canterbury. Um, and uh, you'd think that uh, be the last you'd hear from people who, who leave your university, not so with Richard. Um, in fact, um, he's had an enormous impact on our teaching ever since he's gone to Canterbury because he came up with this little piece of software called Code Runner. And um, any recent Auckland, um, uh, Canterbury, or Open University graduates here? Anyone remember Code Runner? Anyone's used Code Runner in their education? I see a few people nodding heads. Perfect. So that's Richard's baby. So in case you don't know what Code Runner is, Code Runner is a, a piece of um, uh, a software that sort of plugs into, into Moodle, which has already been mentioned here a couple of times tonight. And um, the idea with Code Runner is that students can basically um, uh, solve coding problems um, uh, via a web interface, and uh, the code that they write then gets run uh, against um, a couple of tests that the teachers can specify, and um, they get immediate feedback as to whether those tests have been passed or not. And so uh, I looked at this around our department and to just sort of see who apart from me was using Code Runner. It turns out there's 17 other courses in our department this year that have used it. But it's not just Auckland and, and, and Canterbury and Open University. It's spread to the UK, the US, Ireland, Canada, France, Germany, Austria, India, Australia, China, Japan, Switzerland, Poland, Chile, South Africa, Brazil, Madagascar, Spain, and Singapore. And these are only the sites that are known. So there's probably a few that are not known. So um, finalist number four is Dr. Hilary Oliver, um, who I hope would be able to be here tonight, but um, uh, unfortunately is not. Um, so he's a senior research software engineer at Neva, and we all know who Neva are. They're the joint up the road that tries to convince us Jaffas that the climate in Wellington isn't that bad after all. <laughs> and um, of course, um, to do that takes a lot of number crunching. And if you're a climate scientist or a weather forecaster, then that's challenging for two reasons um, that are computing related. Firstly, you've got to get the job done in time. Secondly, 
and, and, and then when you've, once you've done it, you've got to do it again for the next four, forecast cycle. And secondly, as you do it, your data comes from all sorts of corners. There's a bit of pressure data from here and a bit of temperature data from over there and a, another sort of part forecast from, uh, from, from somewhere else. And these systems don't really sort of like to play together easily because they've all been developed for different purposes and, and, and other places, and they need to be orchestrated. And in fact, it takes an enormous amount of orchestration to do this, and sometimes systems may simply not work or they may fail and, and, and data might not come in. So and this is where Hillary's open source package uh, Silk comes in. Um, it takes care of that orchestration. And it's not just used by Neva, but as it turns out, also by over 20 other organizations across all continents. In fact, the list that we saw um, reads like a who's who of weather and climate giant. The UK Met Office, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the Australian Bureau of Meteorology, the Max Planck Institute for Meteorolo uh, Meteorology, the South African Weather Service, the German Climate Computing Center, and that's just part of the list. So basically, each and one of the finalists for the Clinton Bedoni Award tonight has individually had a very huge impact uh, a very impressive impact in one or more open source projects. And for a country um, the size of New Zealand, together with what we've already seen tonight, that's really, really impressive, right? So would you please all join me in a big round of applause for our finalists and their achievements. <laughs> and right, now comes the moment we've all been waiting for, the winner of this Year's Clinton Bedoni Prizes, Richard Lobb. Um, well, I was somewhat amused to see myself described as bedrock. Um, I'm, used to being, I'm used to being called an old fart, but the geological timescale was a new twist. Um, <laughs> um, there's a bit of a perception out there that software is for young people, but I would wish to argue against this vehemently. I wrote my first program in uh, 1967, and I've been passionate about programming ever since, and I still love it. It's a recreation as well as a job, and uh, it's kind of good to have a job that's also your recreation, um, although some people think that's a bit sad, but it works for me. Uh, so... Um, it's a great honour to be here, I must say, a real buzz. Like I say, it's, uh, I've been passionate about programming and this is a, a real buzz. Um, I would like to thank my, uh, my alma mater and the, the, the team from University of Auckland um, for being early adopters of, of the Code Runner system, um, which helped encourage me to keep developing it. And, um, of course, I'd like to thank the organisers of this wonderful uh, venue and uh, show we've got here. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's really it. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Congratulations, Dr. Richard Lobb. Uh, the next award is a bit of a fun one. I hope you voted. It's the Open Source People's Choice Award. So presenting this award once again this year is Derek Wilson. Uh, Derek... Mm. But if that's a first this evening. Uh, Derek is the New Zealand Country Manager for Red Hat and has been part of the ANZ management team for the past six and a bit years. Uh, for the last... 25 years, he's worked across a number of organisations from local startups to big global IT giants. And of course, he has a passion for open source technology, so please join me in welcoming Derek to the stage to present the award. Thank you. Now, I wasn't always an open source guy. So when I first started programming, I, for those of you who are old enough to remember, and Richard might be, um, I programmed in Macro 11 and COBOL, so that's, that's showing my age, unfortunately. So. Um, so, so Red Hat is a global, everyone thinks, look, we commercialise open source software, but we also invest a lot in the local New Zealand community. Um, we have a, a global learning management system which our 12,000 associates use. Any ideas what it is? Totra, yeah. 
So it's, it's, it's our global learning management system. So we're, yeah, we're pretty happy to be investing back into the New Zealand community by using local systems. So, so the People's Choice Award. Um, we've got six finalists. And they're all coming together. That's good. So I think we'll clap at the end of the six finalists rather than every one, because I could be here for a while otherwise. Um, the first one needs no, not too much introduction. It's Clement Ziedler, um, who's you know, looking at the, the, the portable privacy around preserving cloud. Um, and he's produced a thing called Vajaya, which is a data storage and data sharing solution that allows users to store their data locally or in the cloud. And it gives them the flexibility to move service providers at will. Um, Danny Adair, um, really important for ongoing leadership and support of the Python community in New Zealand. So Danny founded the New Zealand Python user group many moons ago, and he's put a huge amount of time and effort into, um, into the Python community over the years. Um, Kisara Rathnyaki for the Deep Dreamer <laughs> oh, was that a clap for the pronunciation or for the project? So it was a <laughs> so <laughs> that's for the Deep Dreamer Artistic AI project, and it's a free open source command line program that can be used to generate AI artistic images. Um, Michael Proper, chairman of the Clear Foundation. Um, you know, I don't know if you know much about ClearOS, but it's a Linux-based open source system um, based on CentOS which makes it easier to manage IT resources by you know, combining cloud and server and network features. Um, it's been used a lot for not-for-profit and education uh, communities. Um, the Stencilla project, um, software enabling um, reproducible research. So it allows open source co software components to you know, reproduce documents um, using interactive source code. And finally, um, the Farai Huara Census Project, which we've heard about before, this is a very cool project, which allows you know um, the sensors which give homes um, climates which people can exist in, um, and it's all open source using open source firmware and open source software, um, and it's going to give you know education and help residents have a healthier home. All right, and I haven't got an envelope, but. I do know that the winner is... <laughs> it's down there, no envelope. <laughs> Sweet, we've got two of them now. <laughs> Oh. Kia ora. Um, I wanted to thank my um, conspirators, uh, Amber Craig and Hidia Tirangi, um, when we first proposed this idea um, that I built in my own house for my own whānau and inflicted on them. And Amber said, why don't we do it for everybody? And, and then she said, I know someone who can help us pull it off. And we found Hiria Terangi, and then we started, we started with a year of tinkering and then a year of doing it seriously, and here we are today. Um, we've deployed into Strathmore Park, we've deployed into Porirua and parts of Wairarapa with some funding from Te Puna Kokiri, the Kahal Fund. Um, I want to thank all the volunteers. There's so many of them who turn up. At our, at our GitHub, at our Git repo, and they, they test my code, they tell me what's wrong with my code, and then they write better code sometimes and send me that instead. Um, and that's how we got here. When I tweet at, at 10 p.m. at night saying, can someone please do a code review, and, and 10 people turn up, and, and they look at it, and they suggest how I could make it better. So thank you to everybody. Thank you to all the volunteers. Um, I want to mention the Kumatua that um, inspired a lot of this. Um, and some who have passed from their homes that are making us unhealthy, that, that we, we live in a country that seems to be okay with people dying of pneumonia in their house and they're, and they're not that old at all years. And I don't want that to be the way we live and I want to get this off the ground. I want to get it everywhere. And if you have the skills in testing and QA and even checking my spelling, please, you're very welcome to come contribute. Thank you very much. <laughs> Congratulations.
congratulations to the Whare Hauora project and congratulations to all this evening's winners. Now, strictly speaking, this is where tonight's program would have ended. However, tonight there will actually be two additional awards. As you will now understand, the judging panel had an extremely difficult job to do and asked that these two additional awards be made. So, without further ado, presenting the next award, the first of the two extra special secret awards, is Grant McLean. He'll be presenting, and he's someone you may know as a prolific open source contributor and advocate. So come on up, Grant. Thank you, Catherine. So I'm privileged to be here to present the first of tonight's special awards. Um, you will have noticed there are no details um, of this award in your program, so I have the rather difficult job of briefly summarising this individual's remarkable catalogue of contributions. If we had categories for the most prolific contributor of code to one project, or for the most diverse range of projects contributed to, this person would probably be a winner in both. If we had a category for encouraging others to contribute, welcoming them, nurturing their contributions and making them feel valued members of the community, this person would be a winner. If we had a category for not just having great ideas, but actually getting stuck in and making them a, those ideas a reality, this person would be a winner. If we had a category for thinking long and hard before putting their hand up to work on yet another project, this person would not be a winner. <laughs> of course, this person was nominated both as an individual and as a project contributor in a number of categories this evening, but the judges felt that this person's contributions transcended the system of categories. Recognising them in one area would overlook their remarkable contributions in so many others. In her day job, she works as technology lead, empowering innovation in government services. Previous work roles included working on the Dictionary of New Zealand Sign Language and in typical fashion her contributions continued even after she moved on to a new job. As we just heard, she was a founding member, trustee and lead developer on the Whare Hoora project. She is uh, an inveterate lover of gadgets and has even managed to combine this interest with her love of gardening. The Internet of Things extends to a vegetable patch. And she's an active developer on the growstuff.org site, which helps gardeners track what they plant and harvest. She's active in local user groups and with helping kids learn to code, and has also served as an Internet NZ counsellor. So please join me once again in recognising Brenda Wallace. now. <laughs> um, my mum's here. I want to dedicate this to my mum. She's over there. She's awesome. Thank you. And to end tonight's emotional roller coaster, presenting the final award. It's another special award which will pre be presented by Chris Cormack, whom you've already met tonight. So please join me in wel welcoming Chris back up to the stage. Uh, kia ora noa e um, As soon as I start talking, you're going to figure out who I'm talking about, so I'm not going to try and be sneaky, I'm just going to launch straight into it. So, uh, ngā mihi nui kia koe Lillian, mō tō whānau, mō koutou uh, 
mahi tino whakahira hira mō te iwi Māori, mō Aotearoa katoa hoki. Um, this again is a project that transcends categories. We couldn't, there was no one place, like it could have been across most of the categories tonight. It's a project that um, has a huge potential to make a massive amount of changes in people's lives. Those of us who are in the open source community often talk of freedom and how by using free and open source licenses, we, had, we allow developers and users to be free in what they do with the software. This project takes it even further and using open source software to deliver the teaching of skills that not only provide for greater possibility of future employment and financial security, but also allowing people to reconnect, or I suspect, in many cases, connect with their taha, wairua, taha Māori hoki. By providing women in prison the opportunity to learn weaving, the project helps to lift and care for the mana wahine of these wahine helping to repair the damage to the kirito and in time hopefully providing real freedom. E ki ana te whakatauki, whiria te tangata ka puta he oranga, whiria ngā mahi toi ka puta he tino ranga tira tanga. So it is with great pleasure that I award this special award to Lillian Hetet Owen me tōna whānau hoki. Tēnā koe, Chris, a tēnā rā koutou katoa. E hui mai nei, tēnei pō kanwe te miki a koutou. Um, thank you, Catalyst, for this wonderful event. Our whole whānau turned out tonight because we thought it was a great um, opportunity to come to an awards ceremony, which we've never done before, and spend some time together and enjoy a nice meal. This is a complete surprise. <laughs> um... I've shed a little tear because I was thinking, as Chris was talking, about a young woman named Marie who made some bad choices in her life. And tonight, she's, we're here enjoying this lovely evening. She's half an hour away behind double gates and locked doors. Um, four months ago, Marie heard about a pilot project for weaving, and she had always wanted to learn Māori weaving. So she put her hand up, and she turned up to the meeting that my sister Veronal, who teaches um, the course, and I were at with uh, some of the prison staff and their tutors in their secure online learning suite, not realising that she was going to be having to use a computer and learn this stuff online. She didn't want to do that. She never wanted to go to that secure online learning suite and she didn't want to, all she wanted to do was learn to weave. Four months later, she is learning to weave. But more importantly, she loves the secure online learning suite. She loves learning. She's your end user. It's because of you people that Marie has connection with the outside world and, as Chris said, with herself and her tūpuna and her culture. 
So thank you. Thank you all for your generosity and your aroha. Kia ora. Oh, you guys. <laughs> okay. uh, we definitely can't go home tonight with just a few more thank yous. So, firstly, I want to thank and congratulate all of the nominees and all of the award winners tonight. Um, as it's been said so many times in so many heartfelt ways, your work is a wonderful gift to the communities you serve. So thank you so much. Also, a very big thank you to all of the colleagues, friends and whānau who came out tonight to support the nominees and to support the New Zealand open source community. Thank you so much. <laughs> this is much better for the speaker who has a lapel mic. Um, I've got a little notice for the award winners. Um, on the table just over here by Alison, um, our, who was one of our excellent event organisers, Alison and Laura. Um, they've got some boxes available for your trophies and a certificate for you. So at the end of all of this, I'd ask you all to come up on the stage, um, grab a box to take care of your trophy on the way home, and if you're willing to join in a group photo. So I'll mention that again at the very end. Um, but I would like to thank Alison and Laura who organised the event and all of the support staff here at Te Papa tonight who have looked after us all. Um, and lastly, to our Tylus New Zealand Sign Translators, to my left, thank you so much. Uh, Alison just let me know that for all nominees there's a certificate, so please all nominees and all winners, if you want to come up at the end and join the group photo at your choice, that would be lovely, um, but at least make sure you take home your certificate and box up that trophy safe and sound to get home. So, thank you so much, everyone. Good night. Kia pai to hiringa, Mauri ora.